What's up, navigation traders? Hope everybody's having a great week of trading. I want to make a quick introduction to Ophir uh, and, and just let you know a little bit about what's going on today. And then I'll hand it over to him and, and let him jump in. So first off, just want to say thank you. We're gonna, we've got a lot of great stuff planned for you today. It could literally change the way that, you're, that, that you trade. I know it's been a huge game changer for me and for the rest of the membership at Navigation Trading. And when, when I first started trading over 16 years ago, we didn't have anything close to the technology that we have today. And, and thanks to people like Ophir, now we're able to just make a couple, you know, three or four inputs into a piece of software and it spits out so much data and, and so much information that can really, really improve our trading. You know, I know if I would have had the software that we're going to be talking about today, it would have not only made me more profitable, but would have saved me literally thousands of dollars in bad trades. You guys know if you've been a part of navigation trading for any time at all, you know that we're ultra focused on placing trades based on statistics and probabilities, not hype or emotion or opinion of what we think the market's going to do. And you know, successful trading means not guessing on trade strategies, but using this data and analytics to back up these strategies. So many of you have seen me use the CML trade machine, the option strategy back tester in my courses, my trading videos. This software has proven to make my trading much more consistent. And as a new trader, if you're a newer trader, it can really give you the confidence to place trades based on how, you, how, you, how the trades would have performed over a significant number of occurrences. You know that we preach that over time it, it takes a significant, you know, it takes a decent number of occurrences before the probabilities can play out. And that's exactly what this piece of software does for us. So the second quarter has just ended. June 30th was the end of the second quarter, which means all the big names, all the stocks are coming out with their earnings announcement. You know, one of the biggest things that we use this software for is around earnings related trades, right? We've got certain trades that we can benefit before the earnings announcement. We put on certain trades that benefit during the earnings announcement. And we have specific trades that we put on that benefit of what we call post-earning trades or after the announcement is, is released. So we're going to talk about some of those different things. Uh, the, the big takeaway before I turn it over here is I just want to make sure that you understand that not all strategies are created equal for every situation. You know, and I think that's why a lot of people uh, takes them a while to grasp trading is because they they learn a strategy like an iron condor and they think they can just put that on anytime and, and it's going to be a profitable trade. Well, that's not the case. And you have to know the specific situation for each type of strategy that you're trading. So, you know, I think the information we're going to share today will literally change the way you think about trading. And with that, super excited to introduce our special guest, Ophir Gottlieb. Ophir is the CEO and co-founder of CML. His history includes being a former market maker on the New York Stock Exchange. He is the inventor of some different risk models, which are now owned by MSCI. He's made a tremendous amount of contributions to the trading industry. You can see him featured all the time in Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Barron's, Forbes, you name it, all over the financial television around the country. Please welcome Ophir Gottlieb. How are we doing, Ophir? Doing great. Thanks for that intro, Steve. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined. We're all lucky to have uh, navigation trading around. Uh, I think Steve's a great resource. And I hope today what I'm going to show you is going to also prove to be a great resource. Uh, I'm going to play a short movie demonstration. But before I do that, uh, I want to talk about what we're going to talk about. Right? So we're going to start with directional trading. So that's either bullish or bearish, right? We don't always have to take a bullish position. And finding the times to take bearish ones can not only diversify your portfolio, but it can also work very well on those aggressive down days. And we seem to be having more of those down days uh, recently as, the, as this bull market kind of nears a decade in length and we get, you know, political stuff now affects the market, which it didn't used to. And so being able to identify patterns in both directions is very, very helpful. It's also a smarter way to trade. But the patterns that we try to capture, you'll have reasoning behind them. That is, they are empirical and objective. So while it's great to trade with your gut sometimes, or what some people kind of call feel, um, this demonstration today is about empirically observable fact. 
The product is called the trade machine because that's the kind of structure that provides a machine. Uh, we're going to look at a bunch of situations. Uh, I'm going to share a picture here. Um, so we're going to look at situations like this, right? like a, there's a bullish gap after earnings, and you know I call it stargazing. You see a stock ripping, and you're like, ah, what do I do now? Is it, is it too late to get in? Is it, should I get bearish? Should I just avoid it? What do I do? And a lot of times I find, you know, myself just kind of staring at the ticker as though that's going to do something for my trading account. Uh, and I promise you, well, no matter how much will you have, you can't change stock prices. Um, but the question is, you know, like, okay, so a gap happens, and so what does that mean? We have confirmation of momentum, but we want to test, is this is this a signal of continuing momentum? So maybe for the next, let's say, is there a window for two weeks that maybe there's going to be something kind of a bullish follow-through? Or maybe not. Maybe this is just not, not something that happens. And, of course, the same thing can be said about, um, remember, don't always have to be bullish. It can also be this. It can also be an earnings miss, right? And so our gap down, right? Is this a signal of more momentum? Does it present a tight window, say two weeks, where that directional movement will continue or, or not? But then it can even go further than that, right? So maybe we want to look at not just the impact of an earnings gap on today or the next two weeks, but maybe we want to look at it, say, in the next three months, or maybe the impact it'll have on the trading right before the next earnings event. Right? But maybe if a company gaps down, then in three months, when they're about to report earnings again, maybe maybe there's some bearish momentum in front of that, or vice versa. Maybe there's bullish momentum in front of the gap. Up. I mean, do positions move because of that last gap? Is there this lasting effect? So we're going to look at all of that, a lot of that. Then we're going to uh, move to just a bit of technical directional trading, so not a lot. Actually, we'll look at one trigger that is a combination of eight signals. But again, we're going to look at bullish scenarios and bearish scenarios. And then finally, we'll get back to the grassroots of option trading. That's non-directional trading. That's one of the great thing about things about options. You know, when should you buy volatility? When should you sell volatility? Even if it's directions, when should you should put on an iron condor or sell a strangle? When should you buy a strangle? And so these are things we're going to look at. So that's what the movie is going to cover. And when the movie's over, I'm going to come back. I'm going to slow everything down and show you how, in reality, it's just three or four mouse clicks, and you'll be able to find trades or trade analysis that suits exactly what you're looking for. Maybe you like bullish bets, maybe you like bearish bets, maybe you like non-directional bets, maybe you like ETF bets. And so the movie's gonna seem very uh, fast moving, it's gonna be very rich, and it generally gets people very excited, but it also can feel a little bit overwhelming by the time we're done, and I'm gonna simplify all of that probably in two minutes when the movie's done. So that's all for my intro, and I'll let Steve play the movie. And I just want to remind everyone I'm here. Let's talk about answers. Does momentum trading actually work? And if so, when has been the best trade entry? Which stocks have worked the best? And what has been the best time to exit? What are realistic average returns? What are historical win rates? And if this strategy is more than simply a reflection of a bull market, then it should have worked during the bear market as well, during 2007 and 8, when the S&P 500 collapsed into the Great Recession. Even further, to really do empirical analysis, we need to look at everything. For example, does a large stock move from the prior earnings release have an impact on the one week of trading before the next earnings release? The same question can be answered about any momentum that immediately follows an earnings gap up. Here's Apple, for example. After an earnings beat, does that represent a short window, say one or two weeks, where the stock has continued to rise? Does this happen for other stocks? We can also look at earnings misses. Not everything has to be a bullish play. When a stock misses earnings large, does that mean that there's a window for the next one to two weeks where the stock continues to slide? There need to be answers to these questions. If momentum trading has worked in the past, it should be empirical and explicit. And that's it. Also. How about technical analysis or technical trading? And if it really does work, okay then. Which indicator has worked and on which stocks? It doesn't matter how much noise there is out there. If technical analysis works, the results should be empirical and explicit. That's it. And what about non-directional option trading? Has there been a way to profit without making a directional bet? Again, empirically, does this work? And if so, when has been the best trade entry? Which stocks have worked the best? And what has been the best time to exit? What are realistic average returns? 
What are historical win rates? And again, if this goes beyond coincidence, beyond just a bull market or a low volatility period, then it should also work during a bear market and at times when volatility was elevated, like during the 2007 and 2008 market crash. Answers. That's what this is all about. We're going to cover all of this, and we're going to do it pretty quickly. We'll start with momentum, then technical analysis, then non-directional history. All right, let's go. We're going to start with momentum. We'll start with our first pre-earnings pattern. So one of the least recognized but most important phenomena surrounding this bull market is the amount of optimism that sets in the two weeks before earnings. Now this is totally irrespective of whether the stocks have a history of beating earnings. In fact, many of them don't. But in the two weeks before earnings, there is a massive momentum rally into the event. What the scanner will help us see later is that while there is this two-week pattern, sometimes one week or even just three days presents a better trading window. We'll start with two weeks here and address the other time periods when we cover the scanner. Let's look at a simple idea. Let's just buy a monthly call option in Alphabet two weeks before earnings and selling the call before the earnings announcement. So we'll get long a call, we'll go to custom earnings handling, we'll open the trade 14 days before earnings, and we will close the trade one day before earnings. We are not taking an earnings bet. This is a pre-earnings trade. And here are the results. We can see across the board, this has been a winner. And just to see what's happening, we can look at the stock price. This is a two-year stock chart of Alphabet where the blue E icons represent the earnings dates. We can see with the little yellow arrows, the momentum that leads into the event. We've also put little boxes around the actual stock movement after earnings. And we can see that Alphabet sometimes spikes on earnings and sometimes it looks like an earnings miss. The real question we also wanna ask is, can we improve this pre-earnings momentum signal by looking at the prior move from earnings? That is, does this earnings beat here have any impact on this pre-earnings momentum the next time here? And equally as important, does this earnings miss here have any impact on the lack of pre-earnings momentum the next time right here? While we're looking at this, we might as well look at the rest of FANG. So I'm just gonna put the rest of the tickers in here, comma delimited. Our members have seen the research where we have shown empirically it has worked in both a bull market and a bear market with statistical significance. And it works for lots of groups of companies. But even when we're looking at a small group like FANG, what we need to do to find the best trades is to focus on the win rates. Netflix and Amazon are a coin flip. Even though the returns are positive, these aren't the best of breed. But a good trade turns into a great trade only after we do risk control. So let's drop a tight stop on these calls and also a tight limit. We'll go down to the close trade one section. We will close these long calls if they go up by 30% in a two week period. And we'll also close them if they go down by 30% in a two week period. All of a sudden the trade is clearly an alphabet and Facebook, not Apple, Netflix, or Amazon. So let's focus on those two. Now we can see the staggering returns and we can see 15 wins on one loss if we held these two as a portfolio. And just so you know, we're not pulling a fast one on you and that calls always work on these companies. We can just look at the 15 days after earnings. So we'll open one day after earnings and close 15 days after earnings. And these trades are actually negative. So this is in fact, a pre-earnings momentum trade based on the personality of this bull market. While we're here, let's go ahead and look at another trade that's very similar. We'll go to custom earnings, and this time we're gonna to look to open the trade just one week before earnings, so seven days before earnings and closing it the day before, as opposed to the two weeks before earnings trades we looked at with Google and Facebook. And this time we'll look at Nvidia. So we're gonna buy a call seven days before earnings, close it the day before earnings, we'll put a stop and a limit, and we'll look at the last three years. And here we can see with NVIDIA, 11 wins and one loss with a 1,352 total return. And if you're wondering how I knew to look at NVIDIA a week before earnings, this is how. The Pro Scanner, which is available to Trade Machine Pro members. We select Pro Scan, then we select Buy Strategy. We can choose any grouping of stocks, but for now, we'll use the S&P 500. Since we're looking at pre-earnings momentum trades, we're going to scroll down to the pre-earnings section. You'll note that we scan for 14-day, 7-day, and 3-day pre-earnings momentum trades. Let's now look at the one-week back tests and just look at the three-year results. So we'll tap on 7 days and we'll deactivate the other buttons. We can see NVIDIA here. This is a tech darling that has had immense pre-earnings momentum, showing 11 wins out of the last 12 pre 
pre-earning sessions with an average return of 39% in a week or 493%. For those of us that like trading the tech names, we can select the NASDAQ 100 and sharpen our scan results. We can find a familiar name as well, which is Microsoft at the top of the list. For the traders that really want all the edge they can extract from the market, we touched on it earlier, it does turn out empirically that if the prior earnings report resulted in a large stock move up, then the next pre-earnings period does show greater momentum that is statistically significant better returns and higher win rates than the already remarkable statistically significant pattern of the baseline. That research is available only to Trade Machine members. Here's a quick example of how to make use of this new research. Let's take a simple idea. We're going to look at Netflix and buy a call seven days before earnings and close it the one day before earnings. So this is not an earnings trade. It simply tries to capture momentum in Netflix before earnings. And here are the results over the last two years of just buying an at the money call. Six wins and two losses. And the average return per trade that includes the wins and the losses was 26%. But now let's impose the rules that we can garner from our empirical research. We'll go to custom earnings, and now we will only do this pre-earnings call if the prior earnings stock move off of earnings was a gain of 5% or more. Now we can see this has only happened three of the last eight earnings sessions, but all three have been winners. And rather than a 26% average return, we now see a 34.4% average return. So we see an increase in the average return and an increase in the win rate, which for Netflix is now 100%. You can now do this for any stock, for any custom earnings. This is our first exposure to the Trade Machine Pro Scanner. And all we have done so far is just look at a very small subset of another subset, which are pre-earnings scans, the momentum pattern. And it's a fair question to ask if these returns are simply due to a bull market rather than an actually robust, successful strategy. But it turns out that this phenomenon of pre-earnings momentum also worked well during the 2007-8 market crash, even in names where the stock was down over 70% in those two years, like Nvidia. Using the constituents of the NASDAQ 100 and Dow 30 as our study group, we saw a 45% return per stock over those two bear market years. Yes, this is empirically objective fact. But this leads us to one of the other benefits of the ProScanner. We can simply click on a ticker and it will load the back test in our trade machine for us. So let's click on Microsoft. And here are our Microsoft results. 12 wins, no losses. And down here is where the limit gain and stop loss have already been implemented. We can click on custom strategies and we'll see we are looking at, in fact, this one week trade. While we just spent a lot of time on pre-earnings momentum, looking for opportunities right after an earnings release can be fantastic as well. What we'll do is we'll go to the pros scanner, we'll look at the NASDAQ 100, and we'll look at the one day after earnings jump long call. That is stocks that have popped higher one day after earnings and what it would have looked like to buy a call for the next two weeks. And here are the results over the last three years. We can see Apple, Tesla, and Applied Materials haven't lost over the last three years off of a large earnings move. And here's some other tech names like Baidu and Google. Let's just click on Apple and see what the scan result is actually giving us. We are looking at buying a call, long a call, under a custom earnings situation, which is specifically buying a call one day after earnings. So the announcement has been made, the stock has moved, closing it 14 days later, but we only are testing this entry if and only if the stock went up by 3% or more after earnings. So we're looking for stocks that just gapped up after earnings to find the ones that have continued momentum for the next two weeks. Apple is a great example. Over the last three years, Apple has seen this stock gap up five times and all five times owning an at the money call for the next 14 days has been a winner. We can click on the back test tile we can see the average return has been 83.8% over each 14 day period. And we can even go down and see every single trade and every single trigger and make sure that the earnings event beforehand was in fact a gap up. You can even download the data into Excel if you wanna check it by hand. So we finished step one. We found answers for momentum trading. The trade entry can be three days, seven days, maybe even 14 days before earnings. The scanner shows us which securities have worked the best in the past. It shows us 
when to exit using the stop loss and the limit gain. It shows us what the historical returns are. It shows us what the historical win rates are. So has momentum trading worked? Yes, it has. Our final step is just to go to the alerts tab and let's enter Microsoft and we might as well add Nvidia with it as well. We'll set an alert for seven days before earnings. I want an email and a text message. The note to myself is that this is a pre-earnings momentum call. Then I add the alert. Here's Microsoft and Nvidia. But I also want to be reminded when it's time to close this trade. So I'm gonna put Microsoft and Nvidia back in. This time I'm gonna go one day before earnings because that's when this trade closes. And I'll send myself a note as well, time to close the calls. And now I've created the alerts to let me know when it's one week before earnings for this momentum pattern. And also I've set an alert so that I know when it's time to close the trade, should I put it on. Now let's turn to technical trading. While there are hundreds, if not thousands of technical indicators, in the trade machine we focus on very few. One of the two technical indicators we look at is the CML Mammoth. That's for moving average and momentum model. And here's how it works. We started with several moving averages. Then we took them and we lined them up relative to where they were for each other. That is, which ones were above the others and which ones were below the others, testing all of the various combinations. We also tested how far apart the moving averages were from each other. That is, were they really spread out or were they tightly grouped together? Then with some machine learning techniques, we found the comparisons and the moving averages that helped predict future stock returns. The next step was to include the current stock price in this measurement, where it lined up relative to the moving averages, and how far it was from them. Once we had a definitive solution for that, we turned to momentum. We didn't only look if a stock had moved up or down on consecutive days, but also by how much. Was it a small move up or a large move up? Or a small move down or a large move down? Finally, we looked at the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Channels, and if the stock was above or below the key levels. With all of that, we were able to build the CML Moving Average Momentum Indicator, CML Mammoth. We have the full details of how this technical indicator was created, including the full equation that allows you to calculate it yourself in the Discover tab with great detail. Now let's look at some of the results. We'll start out by entering four tickers. We'll do two of the chip giants, NVIDIA and LAM Research. We'll do everyone's favorite momentum stock, Netflix. And then just for a change of pace, we'll look at Ford Motors. We'll look at getting long a call, never trading earnings, and we will use the Bull Mammoth Technical Indicator. And here are our results over the last five years using the options that are the closest to 14 days. You can see across the board the results are enormous, and we can see the win rates. With NVIDIA, we're looking at a 60% win rate, so this trade certainly does lose. But the key to notice here is that this trade doesn't occur a lot. It does occur more frequently with stocks that are more volatile. So we can see that technology stocks have more trades triggered than Ford. But let's dive deeper. If we tap on a backtest tile, we can see the details. So for NVIDIA, we can see the average return was 40.8%, 21 wins and 14 losses. So an average return of 40% over 35 trades every two weeks. The average win was over 114% and the average loss was 69%. So when this trade goes bad, it certainly is a substantial loser. But the trades win more often than they lose. And when the trades win, they're substantially larger, almost two to one, than the losses. We can take a look at Ford, a less volatile stock. We can see the average trade return, again, this is over 14 days, is 65.5% with seven wins and no losses. However, over five years, this only occurred seven times. For completion, we'll go back to the Alerts tab. I'll enter NVIDIA. This time I'm looking for the Bull Mammoth trigger. I have my email address and phone number in there. I'll give myself a note, Bull Mammoth trigger. I'll add the alert. And now I will get an intraday text message and email when NVIDIA hits the bull mammoth trigger. So that's it. We wanted answers to these questions. Does technical trading actually work? What is the signal for trade entry? It's the bull or bear squeeze or the bull or bear mammoth models. And where do we find discovery of the companies or ETFs where this has worked the best in the past? As always, it goes back to the pro scanner. And now we have completed step two. 
we have with great specificity questioned, tested, and discovered the results of patterned pre-earnings momentum and technical momentum irrespective of earnings. Our final task now is to answer, what about non-directional option trading? And here we go. It's long been believed and proven that simply owning an at-the-money straddle in most stocks is a loser. In fact, we can do it with our back tester looking at Google. Here it is, getting long a straddle, doing nothing with earnings over the last three years, buying the 30-day option. This trade has only a 41% win rate and is down 57% over the last three years. But we started this discussion with the question, which is, what about non-directional option trading? Is there a way to profit from it, even if we go into a bear market or correction? And we want empirical results. Does this work? And if so, when has been the best trade entry? Which stocks have worked the best? And what has been the best time to exit? Since we see normally owning a straddle in Google has been a loser, let's try something different. We'll come down to custom earnings. We'll test opening the trade seven days before earnings, so one week, and closing it on the day of earnings. Since Google reports after the market closes, this takes on no earnings risk. This is a one week timed trade. This is just short bursts of risk exposure. When we look over the last 14 earnings sessions for Google, we see 10 wins and four losses with a 218% return. And again, this was a one week trade with a short burst of risk exposure, which takes no stock direction risk at all. And during this time period, the stock was up 81% while just owning options for seven days, four times a year returned 218%. Far less risk exposure, no stock direction risk, larger returns. Remember, when we did this without using custom earnings dating, it was a 57.5% loser. And if you're wondering now, does this pre-earnings straddle work better or worse based on the prior earnings stock move like the pre-earnings momentum? Yes, there is a statistically significant signal that will help us navigate when the best pre-earnings straddles are available based on the last earnings stock move. That research is available to Trade Machine Pro members only. We can find dozens, if not hundreds of these opportunities where owning volatility looks like a loser, but timing it correctly around earnings has proven to be a gigantic winner. And the answer, of course, whether it's before earnings or after earnings is in the pro scanner. So we go back to the pro scanner. We go by strategy. We pick our ticker group. In this case, we'll just look at the S&P 500. We have the seven days post earnings long straddle, or if we prefer, we can look at seven days pre-earnings or even 14 days pre-earnings. So these three scans find us the companies where owning volatility has been a winner. So we can answer empirically. We do know the best trade entry. We do know which stocks have worked the best. And we do know the best time to exit by using our stops and limits. We started this discussion saying we wanted answers to three questions. Has momentum trading actually worked? Has technical analysis actually worked? Has non-directional option trading actually worked? And if so, we should have empirical and explicit answers for each of those. We've answered our questions, and we have been empirical, and we have been explicit. There are other questions that the trade machine can answer, like has non-directional option trading while selling options worked? And if so, when? And in which securities? And what are the historical win rates? The trade machine was built to answer questions for traders. It was built to be empirical. It was built to be explicit. And of course, it was built to be easy to use. There's so much more the scanner has, including custom portfolio building. But for now, we have succeeded in our goal. We have answered our questions, and we hope you are a more powerful trader for watching. Thank you for your time. Now, of course, we just focused on earnings related trades. If you like trading the actual event, we have a button for that. You can just click only trade earnings and test any strategy you want, whether it be custom or pre-built during the earnings event. And of course, for all other times, you can always just select never trade earnings and you can do the same thing. You can create your own custom strategy or pre-built strategies. And finally, it bears repeating, we cover every stock and every ETF and every index in North America as well. The opportunities are there. You just need to find them. So this is it. This is how people profit from the option market. It's preparation, not luck. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed that movie. So before we start getting into 
how to find cool trades and setups and selling the ball and buying the ball, getting bullish, getting bearish. I think we just need to take a step back. And this software has four tabs. There's the back test tab, the scanner tab, the discover tab, and the alerts tab. And that's it. So in the back test tab, this is where you would say enter a ticker, like Microsoft, see if you want to say get longer call. You'd click on custom earnings and say, yeah, you, know, you want to test getting longer call seven days before Microsoft's earnings and then close in right before. And this is what has happened over the last two years. And then he said, oh, that's interesting. Well, what would have happened if I only did it if the prior earnings, so a quarter of it ago, was a big rip, so like 5% or more up. Right? So just, I'm just checking the button that says only trade if the last earning stock move is at 5% or more. We go from eight trades to two trades, but we can see this momentum. This is also what happened in Netflix, so you can put more than one ticker in here, just put a comma. And it's actually this Netflix trade that we just got done talking about at uh, Trade Machine in our Discover tab. Netflix has actually beat earnings twice in a row, and they did it again this time with this pre earnings moment. So there's the back test tab, and I say, okay, that's great. How in the world did you even know to look at that trade? Fair question. So you go to the scanner. I went by strategy. I looked at the NASDAQ 100. I like the NASDAQ 100 because there's uh, a lot of liquidity in the options. So then I went to seven days pre earnings long call. And lo and behold, there's Microsoft. And then you say, well, uh, what if I'm interested in stocks that after they have that big gap up, that that gap up continues? So that would be a post earnings trade. You go one day after earnings, jump long call, right? And we showed this in the movie. Apple, for example, for the last three years, every time Apple has had a 3% or larger gain, so Apple stock's about 190, so let's say nearly a $6 gain uh, at this current stock price, that momentum has continued for the next 14 days, all five times that it's happened. And so that's how you find these trades. But you can all say, well, I don't want to be bullish all the time. What if, what if Apple just misses? What, what if any stock misses? You can also look at the one day after earnings drop. So this looks for the same thing, just the opposite directions. Stocks and where when they see a gap down off of earnings, that bearish momentum continues. And so we'll see some names that we really like, right? Like uh, Activision is one of the favorite momentum names out there probably. But it turns out that when Activision misses earnings, right? So if we see the trade only opens, if the last stock move for earnings was down 3% or more, and we looked one day after earnings, through 14 days after earnings, and we bought a put over the last two years, it's won all three times. So relatively large gain. So when Activision sees an earnings miss, that bearish momentum tends to continue. All right, so that's what the pro scanner is. Uh, and we have all kinds of things if you like selling volatility, or you want to look at all tickers, or you want to look at directionless trades, say, um, pre-earnings straddles, we can look at all those. Let's say you don't want to take a direction, you just want to see if the stock tends to move a lot before earnings. Wind is one of the our favorite ones. Actually, electric and biotech this is one of my favorite ones too. We're general. So this is a large cap pharma that the week before earnings, without taking the earnings vet, week before earnings tends to be really volatile. It's one six of the last eight times. And you can see what, what I'm testing by just clicking on the custom earnings button. And you see seven open positions seven days before earnings, close it one day before earnings, right? And I'm looking at buying an Apple earnings well. So there's the back test tab and there's the scan. Then there's the alerts tab, which I showed you before in the video, where you just set up. If you see something you like and say, ah, oh, just send me an email or a text message when that's about to happen, I'd like to know. And then finally, we have the discover tab. The Discover tab serves three purposes. First of all, we send articles out three times a week about interesting back tests that we like. Uh, it's not trade. Oops, it's not trade advice. Uh, it's just interesting back tests that are relevant. So, for example, I'll just open this article. This is Netflix crushed its last two earnings. Here's what that means for the next one. We did a back test. 
14 days before earnings, closing at the day of earnings, but only if the prior earnings, the prior quarter, is at 5%, this is what it fixed. This actually happened again this quarter. So that's what the, the trade insights are in the Discover tab. We also have our frequently asked questions. There are a lot of bells and whistles to the software, little things. And, you know, it's just helpful to have a manual, a user's manual. That's what this is. It's a video, user's manual. It's only nine minutes. It talks about all the little things, like what does that little gear in the right-hand window, in the right-hand side do, things like that. So you become an expert just at the software, very good. And then some other things about volatility trading, things like that. And then if you're interested in some of our empirical research, so the p-values and the statistics we're running, and maybe some of the machine learning we're running, that's also available for you as well. And then if you ever want to share your back tests on Twitter, you can use a share button. Run back tests, so it's cool, right? Let's say we really like that Apple phone. And that's what we just to share it on Twitter. You can just click Twitter button. And it's going to share this back to us on Twitter. So those are the four tabs. So as um, involved as that movie was, it really just comes down to the back test tab and the pro scan tab, right? And then if you like anything, you just set yourself in a way you get an email or a text message or both. So before I go on any further, are there any Maybe Steve, can you are there any questions about what you just saw in the movie or about what I just said? Oh, fear. Uh, Alan had a question uh, and asked if it's capable of dividing pre earnings trades by the quarter. So, for example, showing only performance during the first quarter of earnings on a stock or just on the second or third or fourth. Right. Uh, good question. It isn't as it stands right now, but you can still do it for yourself. So let's do that. Let's take a look at, let me show you how to do it. Uh, let's look at um, a week before earnings. Closing it right on the day of earnings. Okay, and you say, all right, so this is three years ago. Actually, you go five years ago. And you say, well, is there, like, is there a pattern quarter? So here's how you figure that out. Just, I'm gonna tap, what I'm gonna do is tap my mouse button on this. So I tap it, and this opens. You can then take all of this data and put it in Excel. I'm just going to hit the copy button. You can put all of this into Excel, and then you can sort it. In Excel, you can sort by uh, month or by year. So you would just sort it by month, and you, let's say you're only interested in the summer quarter, let's say the July earnings. You'd sort it and only look at the ones with July, and we'll show you uh, if, that's when, if the trades were learned to lose. So you can't get to it immediately, but you can definitely get to that data pretty easily by just dumping it all. Excel. And a lot of our members like to take a trade and put them into Excel and see exactly what's going on. And I said that a lot of our members just kind of like the summary time. So yeah, summary time, so it's up to you. So a uh, long answer to that is you can do it, you just can't do it with one click. Uh, any other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, if not, I'll just sort of finish it off. I know that sometimes, uh, especially with navigation trading, you guys like to look at ETFs, trades on ETFs. So I'm just going to show you a few things I like on ETFs. Uh, and something that I did not show in the video, you actually don't need to pick a pre-made strategy. You don't have to pick a call or a put. Or, you can cr actually create a custom strategy. I tend to like custom strategies on ETFs because ETFs have this uh, unique ability. There are no takeovers, there are no bankruptcies, so you can sell all the time. I create a custom strategy. I'm going to go to custom, and I'm going to add one. And this strategy that I want to look at, it's a pretty simple idea. I want to own a 30-day call, and I want to sell a weekly call against that 30-day call every week. So I'm just going to call it call calendar. I'm actually, this is on the regular stock as well. And I want to get long and at the money call 30 days. We'll add that. And then I'm going to get short and out of the money call, a 25 dollars call, every week. So long, a 30-day at the money call, short, and out of the money weekly call. I'm going to uncheck this button. So this says close all legs with the five months. If I leave this checked, this 30-day option will close with the seven-day option. But that's not what I want to do. I actually want to let this weekly option keep rolling. I'm going to keep selling it, keep selling it, keep selling it while I have this as my back. So let's just see what happens. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save under... I think I'll have a whole bunch of strategies. This is a good way to build strategies the way you like them built, as opposed to a pre-made strategy like a call or a call spread or a put spread, something that's a little bit more, uh, let's say, creative using time splits. 
make sure we've got it. Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at Google and maybe that's your one. What are some uh, ETFs you look at still? Uh, the typical broad-based ones, we trade a lot, obviously, SPY, QQQ, IWM, uh, some of the sector ETFs like XRT, XLF, XLE. All right, that's good. So let's take those and see if we can find ourselves something interesting. But the point of this demonstration is not, to, uh, not about a call calendar, the point is that there's any strategy you like that just requires a little bit more flexibility, you can do that. And you have an unlimited uh, number of custom strategies you can add, so you can actually see how many are. A lot. Um, and so you can test any kind of strategy you like using the custom strategies, and it's automatically saved to your trade machine. So every time you log in, this list is going to be available. I wonder what happened if I stop it. Oh, that's what's going on. And it stops and then it stops. And if you're selling the weekly option, you probably don't want to stop something else. This is the one more shot. Maybe, maybe we'll find a little gem that we will. So okay, here we go. We're looking at the Qs, IWM, XRT, XLF, and XLE. Almost done. All right, here we go. So the Qs, for the last two years, if we bought a monthly call, and against that monthly call, an at the money call, we sold it out of the money every week, four weeks. Then if everything expired, we started over. That's actually been up 644% and has won two out of three times, right? 68 wins and 36 losses in the queues. And you can see it's also worked pretty well in XLF with a lot less volatility quality. But in XRT and XLE, it hasn't really worked that well. In IWM, you know, the win rate's high, but the return isn't that good. So these are the kinds of things you can test beyond just the standard uh, calls, puts, cover calls, spreads, strangles, uh, straddles, strangles, risk reversals, and that. So just something that um, a lot of our uh, more advanced numbers like to use, and it's always out there. And if you're wondering how advanced you can get, you can put up to four legs and stock, so five total legs in any strategy. Um, and they can be of you know, any time, any size. They also have to be the same size. If you want to create a butterfly, you can do like a one by two by one, and do that. Um, I hope that was uh, okay. Uh, are there any other questions? And uh, if not, I think that's your come to the end of my demonstration. Yeah, Ophir, we have a question from Truck that he asked, where can you find a video tutorial using the software? Great question. So on the Discover tab, you go to Frequently Asked Questions, and the very first video is Full Trade Machine Users. You can open up a video, but it's only 9 minutes and 38 seconds. It's got 11 chapters in 11 minutes. So just go boom, boom. General usage, details, trade details, delta, settings, and the scanner, things like that. So about 10 minutes, you become an expert on all the bells and whistles. So like, how do I set my deltas? How do I create a custom strategy? Where was that custom button? How do I do technicals? How do I use a stop and a limit? What does it mean if I do a stop or limit? Even things like, how do you calculate margin? You know, okay, options are margin. How do you calculate margin? That's all in here. How is that technical model you built seen on them? How's that built it's for real? Like you gave us like a three minute demonstration, but I'm talking down to the statistics, right? But we go all the way down to the statistics, and stuff, the uh, statistical significance, right? So all of that is going to be in the discovery tab. So you got FAQ on the left side, and then you got the market insights on the right side. Yeah, and I, I would say when I started using the trade machine, I mean, I picked it up within a matter of minutes, and I know. You know, that's the same for a lot of our members who use the trade well. Even people who have claimed that they're a little slow with technology, they've, they've picked it up too. And, and, and that's, you know, I mean, that's how Ophir and his team have built it, is to be really simple and easy. And that's, that's one of the reasons, it's, you know, it's not bogged down with a bunch of different stuff that doesn't matter. The features that he's put into the machine have kept it light, kept it fast, kept it really simple and easy to use. And uh, and so I, I don't think anybody would have a problem getting to know the trade machine very, very hard. Also, just a reminder, we have a full support staff. So if you do have questions, you just email support at cmlfiz and we get back to you. And if you're really, really having trouble, we'll have someone give you a call. We try to answer it via email because it allows us to get to everyone. But if you're really, really just like banging your head against the wall and you can't get it, we'll, just, we'll have someone call it. Ophir has been nice enough to give Navigation Trading members a discounted price from what it's typically offered at. Ophir, do you want to yeah, show I'm that? Good. You should see a screen that shows a CML Trade Machine discount, and that'll take you directly to the page where you can see more information and you know sign up if, if you're interested. 
But yes. it's cmlviz.com forward slash nav t. So just some things to know about it. Uh, normally it's 129 and we're offering it to navigation trading for 89. Your price will never go up. You will see the price go up for other people, but your price will never go up. Something else, we offer a money back uh, guarantee. If you don't like it after 30 days, that's fine. I mean, we'd rather you liked it than didn't like it just because we'd rather you make the money trading. Um, but if you're just not, it's just not helping your trading, we just give you a full refund. It's really not a big deal for us. Um, and also, even though, you know, it's 30 days, if, if it's 34 days, that's fine too. We accidentally didn't cancel. Now you got charged for two months. I'm like, oh man, we'll, we'll send you both months back. It's fine. We're not, we're not here to trick anybody. We're, not, we're very, very easy to work with. You know, just try to be reasonable. I <laughs> say within 45 days, whatever. You said you don't like it, we'll just send you your money back. So, um, I think it's well worth the time to check out what empirical backtesting can do for your trading. In particular, when you have someone like Steve and navigation trading kind of at your side. And the worst case scenario is you're like, yeah, that's not for me. You just let us know and send you your money back. It's really and Truck, uh, truck asks, is this discount rate only available for a limited time? As, as Ophir mentioned, Truck, the price uh, will continue to go up as he uh, puts additional resources and features in the program. Uh, but if you're once you're a member, it can never it can never increase. You're you're grandfathered in at whatever price you lock in. Yeah, we actually have one one lucky member, one person is paying twenty nine dollars. <laughs> it's the first one we ever sold. Um, we have members paying one twenty nine. Uh, but yeah, your price never goes up. This offer is for a limited time, uh, and then we just go back to normal pricing. At some point, and this is sort of off the beam path, but at some point we're going to be adding so much to it, uh, including API access, that it will actually be uh, for 99 months, so $500 a month. It doesn't matter to anyone who's signing up today. It'll never be more than 89. Actually, it doesn't matter to anyone who's already a member. But at some point, Trade Machine will be a, a $500. UD says, can we make it $29 again just for this time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, thank you, Ophir. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Really appreciate it. I think, you know, if you just get in there and, and play with the trading machine a little bit, you'll really see the value in it. I know it's made a huge difference in the consistency of our trading and, and finding different trade opportunities. Uh, so, Ophir, thank you so much for your generosity and the discount and attending and, and sharing this information with our group. Really appreciate it. And everybody, uh, everybody have a great day. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Steve. Have a great week, rest of the week, guys.